and welcome, I'm Dr. Left Hand Thread and I've been repairing this particular model of DeWalt SDS rotary hammer for a couple of years now, it's a DCH273 so in this repair course I'm going to go step by step, episode by episode showing you how to dismantle, how to troubleshoot, how to find out what's wrong with it and how to do a lot of the repairs yourself without any particular repair skill or ability without spending much money at all. So sit back, relax, this is the DeWalt DCH273 repair course. Episode 4, the internal teardown. In this episode what we're going to do is we're going to open the, the casing here. See this housing? This houses the hammer assembly and this part of the housing houses the, the motor, the brushless motor. Again, it's just T20 screws, you use the same butt, and I might put a, a link to buy them butts in the description just to, just to help you out, if I remember. And the same size and the same length as the, uh, I'm going to pull one out to show you, same size and the same length as the screws that held the housing, outer housing together, except for these two. These two are longer, I'll pull these out to show you. And the rest of them the same as the other. But they all have the same head, they all have a T20 head, you know. They are there a bit longer. So there's two. The two long ones. There's two of the two long ones, and there's two, four, six, eight, ten, with thirteen other screws, I think. The other wee ones. Anyway, they're all the same now, so you can't mix them up except for them two long ones. So we'll pull all those out, and I'll show you how to proceed then. always one on there. There it is. I think now. Yeah. And I think this is the last one. That's the last one there. So when you have all those screws out, what you do, you see there was a screw holding this, this wee bracket on. That's the bracket that the spring goes into from the last video. Just pull that out. It just comes out like that. So the next step is getting this hammer housing off and it gets really messy from here on in to be quite honest with you. That's that. Yeah, I can see what's wrong there right away. See what's wrong there right away but I'll explain later. And this also gives you access. If you're just servicing the hammer you don't have to take this bottom part off. This bottom housing. It actually houses the uh, the motor. And the motor's not too dirty in this one. Sometimes you have to clean the motor. I've actually seen the motor jammed with with uh, dust. And you have to clean that out. But they're a fairly resilient motor. You very, very, very seldom have to replace them. And if you do, you, um, it costs too much usually. Because you can't buy the motor and so on, some motor switch and battery connector assembly you have to buy. So you can clean that out, but that's that's moving fairly free and it was going on, so it's alright. You can remove that housing, but I would recommend maybe to put the lid back on just to keep the dirt out of there when we're working at this other dirty part of the thing. I made an attempt to get the hammer mechanism as close to the camera as possible to show you what's actually going on there. There's um you can see the motor, we'll pull this off to you see, the motor drives these, you know, that's fairly simple, close that down again, 
and this is the one that uh, rotates the drill this makes the drill go round um, this one activates the hammer this mechanism activates the hammer and this is usually the one you need to deal with so what are the things that can go wrong with the hammer that's what we need to explore mostly mostly if she's rotating that means this is usually okay there's a selector there and that um, that's activated by the selector switch we took off in the first video and that goes up and down to activate or deactivate either one of these if you're going to just chisel it deactivates this one deactivates rotation but if you just did it on it deactivates the hammer and keeps the rotation going or if you want both going it can activate both them going at the same time rotating and hammering so that gives you your hammer drill and that's the main function of this machine so what that does when that rotates it puts this piston in and out this slider in and out and hammers at the front here and causes the hammer effect this just rotates the cylinder you know it's quite simple and how that works is there's actually a ball here that the ball's out of place i'll show you here i'll pull this out you see what's going on the actual ball's out of place this here is out of place this is supposed to sit on here what i show you i'll pull this out that's the song that's a whole big assembly but that that ball spindle goes in here and as that this rotates it causes this hammer function bang 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 whatever but it was out of place there that can break as well you can get those broken you can get this shaft broken and i'll show you how to service the hammer the hammer might need service as well so this has come out of place so it might need a new spindle i don't know that's come out of place anyway i'll lift this out to see what's involved in this if this bundle comes out of place or gets broke you lose the hammer function you know so to recap once you've got out this far you make sure the motor's turning which i have done earlier you make sure these turn and aren't broke you make sure that's not bent and is activating both things you make sure that's not broke and you inspect this for either been jammed or broke and there's an o-ring on here i'm going to show you here oh that's perfect it's actually okay that one sometimes this o-ring can be broke sometimes this part of the mechanism can be completely dried out and i will grease that again this is one of the rare occasions that i don't think i have to replace the o-ring i'll show you the o-rings that uh there's this little brown o-ring that's the original part it's a 13 by 3 o-ring I've also been known to use these little generic ones. They're a nice soft O-ring. They're a lot cheaper than the original, but I, I like them because they're soft. The other ones harden up a oh, lot. I find these good. I might just put this one on. Just to, um, just to make a good job of this. Just to get O-ring off there. It does feel a little bit harder. 13 millimeter across here by three mil thick that's your that's your piston ring here we call that the striker that's the striker o-ring this series of videos is aimed at a diy fix so if there's anything wrong on here if the catch ring's gone it might be too advanced for most people to take on or if there's something wrong with the cylinder itself it's going to cost too much money and if this is broken, you don't have an old spare one, it's going to be too much money. If the motor's gone, it's going to be too much money. So really, 
most of your servicing will be involving replacing either this part, this little selector, this part, this little uh, ball spindle. You shouldn't even have to replace this striker too often. This cylinder maybe, but mostly you get away with it. If this is worn, it might be time to get a new machine. Um, because everything else will be worn to that degree and you've got a lot of magic out of her so you just might have to move on so you just can't use any old grease for servicing these parts these three parts here i'll get them closer these parts here must be serviced with a proper sort of hammer grease i use this makita stuff and i will try and put a link in the description there's a part number there 1914C5-7 that is Makita hammer grease it's not as heavy as ordinary grease it's, it's nice and light uh, if you put heavy grease in here with these these sliders especially here it can stick and that has to have a little bit of movement you know it can stick down in there as well so what we're going to do is we're going to use this, this Makita grease Service that a little bit in there, down that slot there, and we'll put a little bit around this o ring as well. If it's a one off, if you're servicing your own machine, buying this is probably the smallest version I've seen, or something that'll do the job. You'll not use all of it, but you use a share of it, you know, down in there. That's a good strong job there. Yeah. So that's that part of it done there. To continue the reassembly, we need to, to put the spindle on here. Pull this out just so you see it. Just so you see what we're dealing with. And that goes on there like that. You know? And some of these have a little spring on them, like that, and a washer. On this part, we don't see the washer in this part. Somebody's been in here before, doesn't matter anyway. I need to get a little washer as well. But it will go without them, but it's better if they're on. It helps hold the spring in. Some of these actually came without the spring on them, so don't be alarmed if yours doesn't have it. Right, so we have the wee ball on, as you can see, and we got it slide that back in there and we're gonna put this in here you can see what I'm doing there see that and we'll roll that right into position to get that into place we can add a little bit more grease at this point up and around that to help that slide and even around the outside that will not do any harm it's uh, fairly good that way so here we are, we'll put a little bit of grease on here, if there's any left in this tube that is. You can use anything really, um, just any, anything you've got. That red stuff will go alright, like any old digger grease or anything like that does the job, you know. Anything you have laying around should do that job quite well. Also, um, it's important to make sure that the selector is in place at this point. To make sure your selector is alright, it has to go into a little, this pin has to go into a little hole there and your selector has to be sitting in the right spot. To do this, you have to do something a wee bit tricky. This is the switch from the side and you put it on, you see there's a shape. But don't turn the, the mechanism upside down or ring will fall out. You put that on there. Make sure everything's in place there. 
that helps you make sure that everything's moving so that's pretty good that's a pretty good tip to line everything up so everything lined up like that you can just put the the lid on again and if you've lined it up properly the seam should close over without any force everything should just slot back into place like a jigsaw puzzle right so i'm going to have to continue the next step of this process in another video because this video is going to get too long and i want to keep it in bite size step by step easy to follow instructions so we'll leave it here and continue this in the next video next episode if you like this video please give it a thumbs up and check out my channel for all my other videos